Bickley Vale is one of Edna Walling's greatest achievements. She's one of Australia's finest garden designers, and she not only designed the gardens here, but the houses as well, including this one where she lived for many years, and I can't wait to take a closer look. Jane gets to go to some pretty amazing places, and this next story is no exception. She's visiting the creation of one of Australia's legendary garden designers, who did a lot more than just make beautiful gardens. This slice of 1920s perfection is the work of Edna Walling, one of Australia's most famous garden designers. She was a native plants pioneer, a writer, photographer, and also the architect and builder of this unique housing estate in the Melbourne suburb of Mooralbark. Named after a UK village in Devon, where Edna Walling was raised, Bickley Vale has 30 properties, and they reflect her goal to create a place where the houses and gardens relate harmoniously with each other and the environment. What's it like, Mary Ann, to live in an Edna Walling garden? Oh, it is just wonderful, Jane. Yeah. I, I've been here for a long time, as you know, and I love it. Absolutely love it still, mm. after all this time. Mary Ann Sporin Fiedler has lived here for 25 years in one of the houses designed by Walling for her mother. So how big is the garden? It's just under an acre, Jane, which is more than enough to manage, but it's a great privilege. I love it, absolutely love it. And it's so quiet. Yes. It's in the middle of suburbia, but it doesn't seem like it. Being an acre, and all of the properties are on about that much or a bit more. And how does the garden relate to the house? Well, that's the lovely thing about it, you see. That's how clever she was. When you look at the house, you'll notice that there's nearly... Every room looks out onto the garden. So when you're inside, there's usually French doors, so you can step out into the garden from almost every room, or you can sit and stare at the garden. One of the things about Edna Walling Gardens is the fact that they are dry because of the great big old trees. And so you have to choose things for the understory that cope without a lot of water. Do you water at no, all? No, I don't. Well, I, that's unfair. I do water a little bit, but not a lot. Mm. You find things that tolerate less water. So hellebores are great. Mm. Hydrangea quercifolia, yeah. that's tough. Ridging on, I mean, I pull it out by the handful. <laughs> the old seaside daisies. Ah, <laughs> but it's wonderful, and of course, it's a very Edna Walling thing mm. because tiny white flowers she really, really loved, and of course, Campanula. Mm. Campanula's everywhere, and it just goes mad. Next door to Mary Ann is the barn where Walling herself lived for many years. It's now being lovingly maintained by Jen and Paul Vardy. We feel uh, like we're custodians to a certain degree of, of living in the barn, knowing that Edna lived here for 16 odd years is special. And I think at times you can feel the presence of Edna looking over your shoulder. And I think she loved to let things alone, not, not tidy up too much. So we love it the garden's wildness. I think the appeal of the very natural plantings, it's not manicured, which means that Paul and our, I can, can maintain it um, with our busy lives and, and four children. <laughs> we'll head down this stone path. And oh, yes. I love the way you come out of this little, reveal, little narrow it path and reveals itself. One of the features of Edna Walling's gardens were the garden rooms, that you couldn't see the whole garden when you arrived, that you'd want to follow a little pathway through and that thrill of which way will I go or mm. which pathway. So there are lots of lovely examples of that here in the garden. And the shade trees, of course, are very important. That's a beauty there. That's right. That's an aspen or mm. a populus tremula. You lead the way. 
Yes, it's got a lovely feeling to yeah, it. Yeah, and you feel you want to walk from yes, one... Yes, just, yes, meander along. Yeah, lovely. from one yeah. garden to the next. This pergola, even though it's rustic, is another of the Edna characteristics, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. Mm. At Bickley Vale here, they are a little more rustic, mm. and this one is laden with growth uh, at this time of year. But What's it got? The, uh, the honeysuckle is really rampant, mm. but smells so beautiful. And then the roses. One of the features of Bickley Vale is that there are gates to encourage a sense of connection between gardening neighbours. Uh, hello, Fardies. Oh, hello. Oh, hi, Mary. How are you? Yes, very well. Have you had a splendid day? Oh, it's been a beautiful day. Yeah. How Look are at you? your beautiful garden. Well, we're so lucky. We can walk through to our neighbours' property. Um, the children run from one garden to another. It's a really safe, lovely mm. environment to be and I think quite different to <laughs> suburbia today. Mm. Edna Walling's intention was always to create a community of like-minded gardeners, and I think that she's definitely achieved it. It's sort of a place that you wish that more communities had. Yes, there should be. It should be more communal. You should know your neighbours and you should be happy in your environment. One of the quotes that I take inspiration from Edna is, where the garden ends, fairyland begins and I think when we first moved here we felt, you know, living in Bickley Vale is like living in fairyland. Mm -hmm.